There we go. We are recording. Hello, everyone. This is episode 10, part one. Sasha Christie. So this is uh, Micronology now. Paula's, well, Paula's given us all her ET stuff and not a lot of the paranormal, which we will go back and we'll yeah, have to catch us. It all in here, you know, because probably stuff I say will trigger stuff in your head from what you've uh, you've had to put up with. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, right. Mine's mostly paranormal at the beginning. And then as I got older, I started to get very UFO and ET. But I don't remember much. As, I, I've got a couple of little memories, which I'll go into. Uh, I've got a few things written down. Oh, I need to write something down that I remember just a second ago. And I got involved with the Chaos Temple. Right. In a weird way, I wasn't actually part of the temple. I wasn't an initiate. I wasn't, a, you know, a chaos, not unofficial. Uh, but I did do some stuff with them and um, also uh, my magical working groups. So, you know, like people will say, oh, you did magic. You've attracted it to you. But I, it's been around me since I was a kid. So yeah. that argument falls on its ass completely because I've had this from being literally a baby like uh, yeah. so I was born in November 1970 I was actually born on the day of the dead <laughs> um you know that doesn't surprise me so I think uh you know sometimes I wonder about that <laughs> anyway I was so overdue so I, mm. I should have been born in November and oh so. yeah uh, you, didn't <laughs> you didn't want to come out. No. Well, right. we'll turn this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was talking to Phil Kinsella about a book that I've read called ET 101, and it's like a, um, you know, like a, a, a manual for people who weren't paying attention in class before they came to Earth to be human. And it's funny, it calls, there's like walk-ins, but there was like crawl-ins. And I said, I'm not a crawl-in, I'm a crawl-out. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I don't want to be here. It's too scary. Um, so when I was born, I'm not, I'm not sure how all of that happened, but anyway, we ended up living in uh, Leak Street Flats in Leeds, which is notorious uh for, well for basically being a complete shithole it got knocked down after not that many years because it was that bad um they called it maternity height so make of that what you will it was that kind of place lots of people on benefits um but people with low wages could afford their own houses i think you know most people who ended up in there were kind of like uh my parents you know just young couples with a baby so, uh, like I say, I was born back end of 1970. So at some point in my little babydom, I used to go, dis I used to vanish from a car. And, you know, they would literally ransack the entire flat looking for me. And I can remember the flat, actually, it was quite a size. Um, I'm not sure if they did phone the police or they were going to phone the police and I just walked up behind them. Um, found me in a wardrobe. You remember them really old wooden, heavy walnut wardrobes? Now, they had this wardrobe that you opened it up and it had all these little uh, drawers in it and the, these little signs and handkerchief and yeah, you know, yeah, I know what you mean. all that kind of thing. It was like that. I remember that wardrobe, very similar like that, yeah. Yeah. A hat. Hat. <laughs> and on it and uh, yeah. So, I um, I bet it would be worth a few bob that now. Anyway, so they had, they had, oh. and it was heavy. It took my dad and another man to, and my dad, you know, massive, six foot three uh, brick shit house, basically. So it took two people to move that wardrobe. That was the wardrobe that I ended up in, under blankets with the door shut. I mean, now yeah. you could shut the door. I don't know. And I was a baby. So a bit weird. Um, don't 
we, I mean, have a lot of memories of that place. Like, but um, I don't, I don't remember a lot of anything weird. But there's one thing that happened, and my whole body screams that it was influenced. This place where we lived was very negative. There was a lot of negative stuff going on. As an yeah. example, um, this black guy was kicking my mum's door in, right? My dad was at work. She phoned the police to say that somebody was kicking a door. She didn't know who it was. She just knew somebody was kicking a door in. It was this guy. And they said uh, to my mum that she was just trying to get him in trouble and pretending that she didn't know who he was and that she did know who he was, you know, yeah. and that just being trouble trying to get him arrested for nothing because she's fallen out with him or whatever so if the police didn't believe women which it was the 70s i mean you know yeah. a bit rough yeah. ready anywhere, but that was the kind of place it was so um this one particular day i just need to drink a lot of my mouth's gone dry so this particular day it was the 4th of november 1974 which was two days after my fourth birthday, um, so I was four years old, two days, born on the day of the dead. Of course, I would be, wouldn't I? <laughs> um, so I remember every single thing about this. Like, it's cl- like literally, it's ex- I was thinking about it earlier. And I was like, this is so clear in my head. Like, like looking at you, I haven't probably haven't got another memory as clear as this. And so it's like almost like my body's telling me something. So I can't say this for sure. I think this was an influenced event. If you think about how negative the place was where I lived and that yeah. negative places attract negative things. That place would have been crawling like it is in Bradford down at, you yeah. know. Down at Canuck. Yeah. So um, anyway. So my mum and dad have gone out and my uncle is babysitting. I'm four. I'm sleeping in their bed with them. Um, I, I, I would always get out of my bed and, you know, end up screaming, running into their room for whatever reason. But this day they'd gone out. So I remember, I remember seeing a bottle on top of this old walnut, I think it was walnut, uh, cupboard. Yeah. And I thought, oh, what's that? So I went and got the stool. Now, my mum had this kidney-shaped dressing table that had, like, three mirrors on it, and it had a long curtain that went to the floor, and it had little flowers on it. It was, like, actually the same colour as your top. It had little flowers on it. Yeah. (laughs) Literally that sort of pale green. And the stool itself also had the curtain thing on it. It was really pretty. Yeah. And... then so that's there underneath the window then there's room and dad's bed next to the bed is this coffee table that my dad's made which is basically just four bits of four before with a flat top on it and some tiles right? yeah yeah everything were tiled <laughs> on there yeah 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 it cool at the time definitely so that was there. and then next to it was the wardrobe so i got the stool and I put it on that coffee table. I got on the bed, I got on the stool, and I got up on that cupboard, and I got them tablets. I opened the top. We didn't have childproof lids in the 70s. Oh. I opened the top. I remember t- putting it in my mouth and counting to 10, and my tongue started to burn. Mm. So I put the lid back on, put it back up on the cupboard, got off, got the stool, put it back laid on the bed. Then my mum and dad came back however many hours later. As a four-year-old, I'd taken 10 Mogadon tablets, sleeping tablets of my mum's. Oh, and my mum still can't even tell me about this. I don't really know the full story. Yeah. That I was in a coma and I don't, you know, I don't know if I was clinically dead at any point or... But anyway, I was in a very bad way and I almost didn't live. In fact, mm-hmm. it's a bit of a miracle that I did survive 10 Mogadons because so, <laughs> super tablets in the 70s, you know, it's a heavy duty jobs. Anyway, so um, it's so clear in my head. I feel like it, 
you know when you body you feel like your body's telling you something and I'm yeah. my bone brain's doing that thing that it does like you can't accept that as a, as an actuality because you don't know it you just think it it's like no I don't think this I'm not thinking this I'm feeling it my thoughts are going you don't know that but you know it's my body that's making my brain dissect this thing so you know anyway I think because of that event I opened a door a door's been opened yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> you know, you go over there and you come back. I mean, in some cultures that have a name for me, I would be some I don't shadow walker or something like that, probably. Uh, and I think that's probably why I've had all this paranormal stuff. Mm. I've been, you know, in a coma. Where do you go when you're in a coma? You know, some people just go, you're just not functioning, but you're just there and you know where else, but I don't believe that. I don't believe it because I've seen so much stuff and I have tried to convince every doctor in the world that I'm a crazy person and none of them are having it. Exactly. You know, I've I really... I have really thought a lot of my... And nobody, all of the people that have ever watched any video of me or any me saying anything and then questioning my sanity if I times that by 10 it might be somewhere near the amount of times that I've questioned my own sanity so I don't walk around going I know this is a fact and I'm a light worker or a yeah. no. anything, I'm, I'm just a stranger from a strange land <laughs> well, yes. that's what I feel like anyway so um Another time in that flat, my mum had some friends, I think they were called Kath and Jed, and they, my mum and dad had gone out and left, we were staying there, and it, we, we were in the room, me and my sister, you know, topping and tailing in the bed, but there was no curtain at the window. Yeah. I'm like, I can't sleep, can't sleep at all, I, I could never sleep, I used to play little games in my head and breathing things. I found out as an adult learn meditation techniques. <laughs> <laughs> Me trying to get myself to sleep doing all this visualization stuff. But anyway, so I'm I'm staring at this light out of this window. It's quite a long, you know, quite a long window. And I'm just looking up at the light. There's I can see the other side of the flats, the walkway, because you can see those like, you know, like oh the lights that they have. Yeah. It's not like up on the ceiling or up on the wall. I don't know what you call them, like, you know. So um, I could see the opposite balcony, just the top of it and the top of the building, and then I was looking at this light, and I thought, I'm going to make that light get bigger, and I'm going to make it, you know, I was just like, I'm going to make it get bigger. And I stared at it, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it, like, filled the whole window, so the whole window was white, right? Wow. So I was four, maybe, at the time. To my head, I thought I had superpowers. <laughs> I'd just fly downstairs. I'd stand at top of attic stairs and I'd start flapping and I'd jump. But I'd always hit the wall at the bottom. <laughs> I never got anywhere. But I, I honestly, because of the flying incidents, I always thought that in this life, I could actually fly. So, oh God, you've just totally freaked me out. I was talking to Philip Kinsella the day before yesterday, and I said yeah. to him, when I was little, it used to piss me off that I couldn't fly. And I would not, I, I wouldn't be like playing around. In my head, I knew I could fly, and I, I couldn't do it. I was like, why can't I do it? And I used to run like mad. I used to, used to look like a right little weirdo. Oh. And, and yeah. trying to up like that to get up in the air and I couldn't do it and it used to really really agitate me because I'm thinking I know I can fly I've just yeah. said that to no. two years ago. You, that you can do it but obviously not in this yeah and that's exactly what I were like at attic steps and then used to run from attic get to the top start fucking flapping no you know but I'm like well my arms are there, but it's the only way that I knew. But I knew I could fly, but obviously 
I couldn't, so I'd end up with in a heap at the bottom of steps with me head to the wall, you know what I mean? <laughs> the people looking at a window like, like <laughs> Forrest Gump running past. <laughs> it's me. Oh, I can't fly! Why can't fly? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was that. Then we moved to um, a cottage which was 300 years old in Seacroft. Right, all oh, right, Seacroft. So in if I Googled it, um, you'll give me where it is later, because I want to Google it and see what's around that area, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, Earth it, <laughs> Earth it. <laughs> Perfect. So, right, so we bought this house, 300 years old. Now, it was a li just a little cottage, um, brick, you know, um, I d no, it, didn't. We, we, it was like, I don't know how many houses were, maybe about 10. And this was the old, old village. And our house was called at the time Stocks Rise. It was three Stocks Rise, number three. Um, and it, I think it maybe had something to do with local village law or whatever, you know, with it being a stock, because it was literally the stocks next to yeah. the house so maybe somebody who lived in that house um meted out the justice or whatever don't know yeah so my mum my mum had uh, she said that i remember even telling us that she'd woken up and she'd seen these fluorescent green like corkscrews that were like uh pig's tails but there was just loads of them and they were all like all in the air and just turning you know like rotating like this in the in the uh, bedroom, in their bedroom, right, right, yeah. So when we moved in this house, right, it was like a bit of a state. Um, they literally the steps came out of the wall. There was no banister on this side. They were just like planks of wood sticking out of the wall, which yeah. they actually made the hatch bigger because it was just like one up, one down basically. So they made the hatch bigger and put the staircase. So you open the door and then there was the staircase instead of opening the door and the um, steps are coming out of that, that, this wall. Now, I don't even remember the steps coming out of that wall. I have no memory of that at all. That's important. So we moved in. My mum's... So they've split the bedroom, they've split the top floor. So there's my mum and dad's bedroom, our bedroom, and a really tiny bathroom that you could just fit the loo, the sink, and a shower. And you were like, like that, I'll like that, you know. Um, I think we only even had a curtain for a while on that door. But anyway, uh, so my mum's in their bedroom and she's seen all these green corkscrews. You can see that, I can remember that. We, we always had little weird things happening. Brush them off, all of them, because they were so common. We just would go like, oh, that was, you know, like, that yeah. was weird. That's why I, when I lived at number 16, which is on this, for people who don't know, I still live on the same street, uh, which 16 is opposite. And my house was very much like that one. It's Sasha, you know, not as bad here, but it were really bad over there for things like that. Oh, so. yeah. It's a lot worse than the, Well, I think the one that you're in now, it goes up and down, right. doesn't it? Uh, yeah, as it's worse, yeah. Yeah, we, but moments and times so uh right that was the green thing at some point in time in living in that house right i used to um leave the house all the time in the middle of the night mum and dad had to hide the keys because i was just going out in the middle mm. of the night getting you know getting dressed and i can remember waiting for people to go to sleep and listening he was to know who was coming up the stairs even if it was my dad's friends, every single one of them people that used to come round to our house, I knew by the sound of them who it was. <laughs> yeah. The footsteps, any noise, they made, whatever, and I'd be like, "That's Keith. That's Peter. Yeah. That's Lynn." You know, because I could never sleep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd leave the house in the middle of the night when everyone had gone to sleep. So they started hiding the keys. So I went out the kitchen window because, like, it's not three hundred year old cottage. The kitchen windows are about that eye off the ground. Off the floor, literally. Yeah. So I choose yeah. to open it, go out the back and around, and then I'd cross the road, 
and go into the, a field, school playing field, all on my own, right? I remember three oblong, not orange, not yellow, not white. But yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, three oblongs like that next to each other, right? Now, I, in my, for years, thought, they were like halogen floodlights, right? And you'd right. See, but there's never been any inland fields at, at all, ever. Never been any halogen lights. And I don't even, and I think back then that would have been extremely fancy <laughs> for a school playing field. To have floodlights, yeah. Where was I going? What was I doing? What were them lights? I've no but idea. You don't anything after that, though, seeing those lights, I, nothing. One time, one time, being in a room, what were they, like, walk, like walking into a room, and there were all these kids all sat down on the floor, and they all had something in their hands, like a puzzle. The wall was like a silver brick, had a kind of like pinkness to it, but that's where the light came from. But there was no light, like, so, no light coming from anywhere, but it seemed to be coming from the walls. And I, just sat down next to this little girl who was dark skinned, she might have been from Pakistan or somewhere. She had me you know them big frilly dresses on. Yeah, yeah, she had yeah. the clothes on, not the pajamas on. I remember that. I remember her having like day clothes on and me having day clothes on. So I don't really know what that was, but no one was, you know, like kids are all noisy, aren't they? You can't keep toddlers quiet. And there was a lot of nope. people in that room. And I don't remember there being any noise. So I'm doing, I'm sitting down just opposite this girl and getting on with whatever it was that was in my hand, which I can't remember now. So, you know, I don't know what that was. Um, then uh, I remember there was, we started building a housing estate around us. And so there was like a lot of, um, you know, cabins, the workmen's yeah. cabins. Yeah. And yeah. Then, can- and toilet and that stacks of bricks and like I said there was no safety nothing no fences nothing all's in the yeah. ground nobody there's what any you know it was it was a terrible terrible mess anyway I was next to this stack of bricks and I just had a stick and I was just like digging about in the mud having a little think to myself about whatever I don't even know and and then I remember looking up at the sky and seeing this copper looking acorn just hanging there like so looked at it for a little while and it didn't move and after could you the size of it to, could you compare uh, it? it's it was very it was very small it was only like like that big right. to me from yeah. where i was so i don't know how high up it was or anything or how big it was but it was yeah. like shape of an acorn yeah it was copper I remember the colour of it being copper. Um, and then I, I looked down, I was carrying on, and when I looked back up again, it had gone. I don't know when that'll have been. It might have been about six, so that might have been about 1976. So then, um, being the spooky little weirdo <laughs> that I was. <laughs> oh, in the bedroom, we had we had bunk beds, yeah? Yeah. And I would when I got to the toilet but I would look on the floor and I could see all these things slithering like this and they all fit into each other like yeah. they, they were sort of pointed on the end and they all sort of fit as they moved it right across the floor so I wouldn't go to the toilet because I didn't I want to put my feet in Hannah waking up in night because I know damn well she's saying and she woke up in night and she regular and you said it's lumps and bumps on floor and she said they'd be kind of like figures were rising up and then they'd go back down and another one would come up and it will you know that's so gross these were flat like like they were very wide sharp snakes mm. but they didn't have a snake shape head they kind of came to a point like that yeah and they're just sort of as they wiggled they were all in you know that's like just- like a pattern, yeah. That just give me something then. I forgot to, about one of my uh, abduction things. I don't. I hate that word. But um, when uh, I was sat at work once, and 
I sit on my bus and have my lunch. Anyway, uh, yard were totally empty. Opposite, uh, the, sorry, I'm, I'll be back I'll be Back to you in uh-huh. a minute. Okay. Go. Only because from what I've remembered. And yeah. opposite, my bus, because I work in a, a works depot, so there's about 30 buses and minibuses. And opposite are the fuel pumps where, you know, all of the council fill up. You've got your bin wagons and your street cleaners and... So they all fuel up in our depot. And this particular day, right, nice, clear, sunny day, you know, nobody's about. And I see uh, two, like, arrows, white white arrows with, like, uh, I can't explain. It's something coming out at the back end of them. And they're together, flying together, so one, two, like that, and they're coming straight past fuel pumps, and it's like as if they've gone into an invisible wall, you know, so I got the middle bit, the back end of it, and they're gone. I don't know what the hell they were, but uh, it actually reminded me of these like small. what? Were they small? How big were they? Um, compared to the size of I'm trying to think at size at fuel pumps, which are pretty big, they're probably about to the top of them and that wide. And I'd say they were probably probably about that wide. You know, so they're pretty big, you know. But yeah. God, what they were, God knows. Just prompted a memory of something that happened in 1999, so I've just jotted a note down. It's all night now. Oh, it's not the light now, anyway, we get together. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so, yeah, spooky, spooky little gate I was. Um, so, like I say, we had a very small bathroom, and... I was not scared of the dark or anything, you know what I mean? I was not, that happened as an adult when I got older. Um, yeah. I went into the bathroom and I just stared in the mirror and I stared in my own eyes. There was no light on. So I'm just there staring into this mirror. I can remember the mirror, it had a bamboo frame and it had like all these little lines and a bit of like bamboo painted on the glass. Do you remember like them Southern Comfort mirrors? It's like, you know, they're on the edges. We had one of those. Like, uh, Southern Comfort. It reminds me of them pub mirrors. They had them in pubs, didn't they, behind uh, optics? We had, uh, I think we had a Jack Daniels and a Southern Comfort one in the, in the house. Uh, yeah. In the room. It looked quite cool, that cottage, actually, because it was all bare brick. They just painted over it, they put some stuff over it, and then painted it white. And yeah. Dad had this Japanese art and... It was like really striking stuff on the walls. I remember it was pretty cool. Uh, but, so I'm staring myself in the eyes, being a spooky weirdo. Uh, <laughs> I weirdo. don't know, maybe seven or eight or something like that. Yeah. So I'm, and my face is changing, changing, do, 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 do. changed loads of times. And then it stopped, boom. And it was this old man. And he had like a bit of hair here. Yeah, and he had a big, like, white moustache and a beard. Yeah. And his eyes, I can remember the crow's feet at his eyes and his moustache, I can remember him so clearly. And, it, like, a white shirt and a shoelace. I absolutely um, packed my pants and I never looked in that mirror again. Um, it was like a, a shoe, like this shape, like this shape, and, and you pushed the thing up and it I made... Can, but, uh, yeah, like, yeah, reminds me of um, I'll tell you, um, oh my god, I'm sure David Essex used to wear one, I'm sure he did because I, I can't stand the guy, I don't know what it is about him, but I can't stand David Essex. But I'm yeah, sure he used to wear something like that, yeah. So that was another thing, I absolutely packed my pants out, uh. Let's think. Let's see, let's see. Oh, right, yeah. Now, the staircase. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I'm in the cow with my dad. My dad hates salt like this, right? I mean, if me and my mum get into it, my dad walks off, he starts looking at the plants in the garden, he just can't can't deal can't with it at all. all. Right. Um, he's an atheist. When you're dead, you're dead. That's it. That's my dad, right? right? So um, I said to him, you know, I said I had a, 
out of body experience in that house. I said, I just sort of got to the top of the stairs and I went down them. Yeah. I said, but we're on the wrong wall. Stairs are on the opposite wall. And he went, oh. He said, don't you remember when we moved in, the stairs were on that opposite wall? And I was like, no. I only ever remember the stairs being opposite the door. And it, he was like that. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't really say it. Bloody rubbish or whatever. Because yeah. I, you know what I mean? It was a definite out of body experience that I remember. Yeah. It. I used to be playing off all over the place all the time. I yeah. couldn't sleep. I could never sleep. So I used to do it like um, it was. I used to start off, and I can still do this now. But I got told by a psychic to stop it. Like yeah, I'm late, yeah. and then I, I, I can make myself rock, and then I rock and I spin, and then I'll spin this way, and I'll spin that way, and then I stop myself, and then I go the other way, and it's a fit sensation. Yeah. I'm literally yeah. rolling around, and then I, and I used to do that as a kid all the time. And then I just at some point I'd feel it like in, in every cell it's like power boost, you know, like you see on the kids' games, you press the button and it goes, Poosh! it was like that. So I could feel it. <laughs> oh, cat, all no, cat, what cat behind you, bloody shit me then, because all I could see what? with this, what is it a white tail or like or somewhere? Yeah. Right behind no in in room, it looked like a snake, a, a white snake, but it's cat. I think it's cat anyway. Ah. <laughs> oh, oh my god, what's that? <laughs> yeah, I've had some weird shit in the house this week, actually. Um, <laughs> what was I talking about now? I forgot. Spinning round. So I'd be like, yeah, laying on the bed, I'd like say, can I stop myself breathing? And I would just get, so I was getting the most shallowest breaths. And, and then at yeah. the same time, I'm visualizing all kinds of stuff. And I used to visualize this brass bed with a like a um, patchwork quilt on it that was on, and it was spinning and spinning and falling and spinning and falling and spinning and falling, and that would be how I would try and get myself to sleep. Yeah, spinning, spinning and swimming and flying and stuff. Um, so I was doing that a lot uh, because I just did. I could, just couldn't get to sleep. I was always awake. My mum said that she'd get up even when I was a little toddler. I'd be sneaking out of bed, putting my wellies on, getting my breakfast, you know, sitting on the doorstep, and my mum would be having heart attacks. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be able to hide the keys because I was a little shit. I was just, just going out one in the door. A little adventures. Yeah. So the next one's quite sad, actually. It was when my granddad died. Um. I used to have to walk quite a little away to get the bus to go to school. And I got up late this morning anyway. But as I walked up to get to Seacroft Centre to get to school, I would walk up Redmire Drive where my granddad lived. And this was after my granddad died. Yeah. But before he died. I have written that down. So anyway, he comes to the gate. He sees we're coming. Gives me a pomegranate. He always used to give me a piece of fruit on the morning. We had a little chat, whatever. I said to Ryan, I got off. Anyway, missed the bus. School was like a billion miles away. So yeah. I was like, I'm not walking to school. I'll just walk back home again. So back back home, same way. Got to my granddad's gate. And I stopped dead. And just as any, like I did in the room with you and Anne Aunt, Aunt Andrews, that. Yeah, that moment. Yeah. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. And I thought, no, I better go straight home. Why? Why didn't I just walk into my granddad's and say, granddad's, I've missed my boss, ring my mum, blah. Yeah. Whatever. If I'd have walked into his house, I'd have found him dead. Yeah. I reckon somebody was at the gate going, don't come in here, don't come in here, you know. And I'm stuck there debating in my little mind. And I was, I don't know, maybe 10. Um, whether to go in or not, why, I, which is weird because we used to live with my grandma and granddad. There is no reason why I would not just walk through that gate. But like you thinking, oh, I won't go into my grandma's when you live there. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, that mission about that, yeah. But I'll, I'll let you finish. And then... Yeah, or he'd have got me to school or whatever, something, you know. But I just thought, no, better not. I'll go straight home. So I got home, 
The mum gets a phone call, screams what down the thing, and she says, I've just got to go out and walk along. She walks out that door. As soon as she walks out that door, I burst into tears. I was absolutely inconsolable. And I didn't yeah. know. I knew. Um, and well, that happened. And me, sorry. Uh, when I was 21, my grandma died. Two weeks before, I had to drink. I used to drink. I, first premonition I had was Lockerbie disaster. Oh, yeah. But, um, first premonition and I told my grandma about this um, anyway so well, I'll talk about that when it comes to paranormal side but uh, one night I had I'd gone into a date sleep, me, me and my grandma in this house and she needs to have a big double bed, I had the single bed in the corner which I had to have my mattress on the floor, I would not have a bed I don't know why anyway um, so I had a really really fucking horrible dream that I'd woke up because I were at Cot Bradford College uh, doing hairdressing and I was oh, in the yeah. second year when it happened and um, so I thought well I've got to crack on with this you know what I mean I've got to go because it'll be exam time soon and this and other so I get I had, I had this dream and I, the dream that I'd actually physically got out of bed I looked at my grandma and I said I'm not going to college today and she said why and I went because you're not well I said I'm all right What's up with you? So I goes off to college. This is in my dream. Goes off to college. Don't remember out about that after that. I wake up. And I'm telling my friends, I'd gone to a pub. You know, it was a Friday night, must have been, because it's the only time when I'd go out. And I was saying to my friends, I was worried all day, my grandma's going to die, my grandma's going to die, you know. And I knew it, the way that it played out. And... Um, I said, oh, don't be silly, you know, your grandma's healthy and fit and this and other. I said, no, she's going to die. And I stopped going out for about two weeks. Day come, and I got out. Of, you know that deja vu moment you get? Well, this was a deja vu three hours. <laughs> so I get out of bed, uh, sets me alarm, gets out of bed. I looked at my nan, as I did in my dream, and I went, and she looked ill. I said, I'm not going to college. And she said, why not? I said, because you're poorly. You can see you're poorly. You drink white. You know what I mean? She said, oh, no, I'm all right. You'll get yourself off. If I need an eater, I'll give her a ring. But that had made my grandma having to come downstairs. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, two minds. And I thought, no, 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 no. She's right. You know, she'll ring my sister if all happens. I'd got to college and all of a sudden I'm sat in class and I get this, it, it felt like, an hammer in right in core of my head, not headache, it was in the yeah. car, do, 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 do. but it was like that. And I couldn't see, and I was like, and I thought, this ain't no migraine because I have suffered a lot of migraines over my years. This ain't no fucking migraine. And I'm like this, and I'm feeling sick, and I get the right fucking pain here, right here, right. And I'm like, oh God, like this. And I thought, I'm going to throw up, I've got pain and my arm were hurting and my left you know what I mean everything was just yeah. hurting down aching. and um about 10 minutes later a teacher come at the door uh, another head principal can I have a word with Paula and teacher's like well she ain't feeling too well you could see all that you know what I mean and, and my head this and I says no 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 and I knew and, and, and me, next minute I could see my sister stood behind her and I went, she's dead. I looked up and all my mates are like sat round me and I went, she's dead, isn't she? And Annie is going, come out, come out. And I go, no, I know. I, I, I don't need to come out. I know what's happened. And literally they had to drag me out of that class to tell me what I'd already knew. But even though I told people already, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to play out. You know, so your premonitions are there, you know. I had that one, um, uh, 2017, October, went to the bathroom. Don't know what I was doing in the bathroom, don't know if I've gone to the toilet or whatever. I got this, boom, my friend was dead. We called him mm. Pid. I was like, mm. oh my God, he's dead. Yeah. I could feel it, I know he's dead. And anyway, I was talking to my mum. I said, oh, my God, I've got this awful feeling, awful. He's not, he's not dead, he's all right. I said, but I couldn't. It was so, it bothered me so long. 
And yeah. um, anyway, he wasn't. He was fine um, until three weeks later when he hung himself. I think the day that I it would have felt been it's when he, because he, he go, we call it going dark side, you know, yeah. the dark side. He'd say that he was walking the black dog. I say I've gone dark side. Um, so I he had an argument uh, with his girlfriend, uh, really, you know, big, and he it just snaps. He had tendencies anyway, bipolar. Um, uh, but I knew, I knew, I knew. And then my daughter comes home, and she went. I've got to tell you something. And I went, what? Well, I knew what she was going to say. She went, paid. Uh, I went, yeah. when? And she went, uh, it was like yesterday. I said, I knew it, didn't I? I said, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. Like three weeks, and there was nothing. What could I do? Like the time before, I got a, a feeling yeah. like that about him. He was off walking around Roundy Park looking for somewhere to hang himself. We had yeah. this connection. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I said, you know, let me come see you, or you'll come see me, or whatever. He had such terrible bipolar, but there's no mental health services for men. It's just like, tough shit, <laughs> bye. You know, if you're not going to jump off a roof right now, then there's no room for you. But one yeah. time, you know, I got, um, I went to, to his doctors with him and I said, he's he's going to kill himself this, this weekend. He yeah. needs to get him from out now. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I said, I'll tell you what, if he dies this weekend, I'm coming for your job. Yeah. Oh, she got him in hospital. So I went to see him in hospital, looking at all the leaflets on the, on all this, this great big rack of all these different leaflets for all different types of people with different types of mental health issues. Single men, nothing. One-legged Vietnamese guy, people. Or, um, you know, there was a, a like a Vietnamese amputee uh, well, there. And I was like, so a Vietnamese amputee has got a support system but a single man hasn't. Anyway, so I used to have a spooky connection with him. Yeah. We'll get to that later because that's that's in like in the 90s. We'll get to that. Some absolutely mad shit happened. Weird. Uh, right, so where did we get? So, right, my granddad died. Now, my grandma had died at least six months before my granddad, but she died of cancer, right? She had pancreatic cancer. It was horrible. She, you know, she, it took forever. She just withered away. It was just a rancid death. Let's put it that yeah. way. And I knew she was dead. And I went to a funeral and I was absolutely heartbroken. My grandma and granddad to me were my absolute world. You know, my granddad was my hero. He was in the Navy. He was a champion boxer, champion polo player. You know, he was a sergeant for in the MOD when I was little, you know, like to me, he was, you know, a hero. All the men in our family have been military. So, you know, just like Now, that. can I just get back, yeah, about this military, and a lot of people do have that connection, you know, with the abduction thing and military. But my side, my grandma's side, um, few were military. Well, it was in that time, one, uh, you know, but... We also have that gypsy connection as well in my family. And I'm like, in the 70s, there was many people who couldn't say that they weren't connected to somebody in the military. But I'm wondering watching. as well, because they say, you know, like gypsy side of it. And you say, I, I don't know whether which part of the gypsy, is it Romany or the Irish side? I don't know. But there, there's also some sort of connection with abductions in that as well, isn't there? So it possibly, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Like yeah. I say, it's a very small island, and you know, in the 1970s, 1946 wasn't that far away. That's like talking about the 80s, you know, yeah. for all. So, stuff that happened in the 80s, it could still be reeling from it now. Do you know what I mean? Your phone's ringing again. Hello. Hello. 
actually some of the that really me it's, again it's do you know summer i don't get our calls all bloody day and then bloody neighborings it's still recording this call, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I can't Do see I? your face. Okay. Uh, okay. Can you see me I'll now? tell you what, so we got a break and then and then we can reboot it. Okay. Yeah. Do that. 